Hey, what's up? Chris Sider here. Today we're going to be talking about five signs that your ex feels guilty after the breakup. Now, these five signs aren't going to be the be all end all when it comes to getting your ex back. The first question you should always be asking yourself if you're trying to get your ex back is, wait, do I even have a chance of getting them back? Well, if that's you and you're wondering if you have a chance of getting your ex back, I've got great news for you. I've actually put together a special quiz that really I designed to answer this exact question. Now, if you're interested in taking the quiz, all you gotta do is simply look below this video and click the blue link that you see in the description of this YouTube video. Once you do that, it's gonna take you to a page that's gonna ask you questions about you, your ex and your time together with your ex. And then it's gonna, after you answer those questions as honestly as possible, take you to a page that's gonna give you a score and personalized advice on how you can improve your situation going forward. Now the whole quiz should only take you about two minutes to complete. I've even seen some people complete it in a minute. It's very quick and easy, but most importantly, accurate. So again, if you're interested in taking this quiz and figuring out what kind of chance you have of getting your ex back, look in the description link below this video, click on the link you see there, and we're gonna hook you up. All right, let's start talking about guilt. Hey guys, today we're gonna be talking about five signs that your ex feels guilty for you. And I wanna start off by talking not so much about a sign, even though I have it labeled as a sign, but more rules. And these are actually the rules to help you understand if your ex is in a situation where they can be feeling guilty. And so the first thing I'd like you to do before you worry about anything about looking at the signs or things like that is to actually diagnose your situation and look at the three reasons that people in general will feel guilty. So you will tend to feel guilty if you knew better than to do what you did, uh, if you recognize that you caused hurt, harm, or injury, uh, or you disappointed someone. Those are kind of the three categories that people fall into when they actually feel guilty. Those are the three whys, why people feel guilty. And I think it's kind of also important to notice that uh, really what matters isn't so much how you feel, but how your ex feels. Your ex needs to recognize that they have hurt you. They need to recognize that, yes, they have disappointed you. Now, I think everyone here is going through a breakup. That's pretty much clear. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching this um, this video. So everyone here who's gone through a breakup is in a prime sort of situation where their ex can feel guilty or feel bad about how they treated you or what have you. The problem is not all exes will view the relationship or the outcome or the circumstance the way you'll view it. Maybe you're looking at this breakup like it's the worst thing that ever happened, but if your ex is looking at it like it's the best thing that ever happened, they're not going to feel guilty because they are self-interested. And that's the important distinction I think you need to make. It doesn't so much matter how you feel, it matters how they feel. It matters that they recognize that they disappointed you. It matters that they recognize that they hurt you or harmed your feelings or something like that. So that's the first thing I would do before anything, before looking at any signs, is you need to understand if your ex recognizes that they've done one of these three things to you. Only one. That's all it takes. They just need to recognize, hey, they hurt your feelings. That can be enough of a reason for them to feel guilty, right? So let's move on and look at the second sign or the second kind of thing that you need to be looking out for, and that is their social media behavior will change dramatically. Let's say uh, Facebook is kind of the prime example I like to use because it's the social media platform that I'm most familiar with. So Facebook, uh, as you know, there's kind of a wall. It updates you when your friends or family or what have you will do something new, like post a video, post a picture, um, leave a comment, your tag somewhere, anything like that can post up high on your wall. So if you always throughout your relationship, your ex was very, very inactive, meaning they, you would post something and they would not, they would not at all respond to it, comment on it, like it or anything like that. And then after the breakup, you start noticing that they're doing the exact opposite behavior. You post something, they comment or like, almost like they're feeling guilty and it's their way of sort of showing you attention. That can be a sign, albeit not a really, really great sign and something that I wouldn't really hang my hat on. But the next one, I'm going to tell you a story about this one. The next sign, I think there's some merit to this one, and that's being abnormally quick to anger. When I was 10 years old, my parents for my 10 
year old birthday party, got me a pair of walkie talkies. Now, if you don't know, they were essentially like the big thing back in the day before cell phones. Uh, cell phones, when I grew up, really didn't exist. Uh, if they did exist, they were the big, big, bulky, kind of ridiculous looking cell phones. Now, walkie talkies were cool because you could you could talk, you can give one to your friend, and you can kind of talk and have a communication when they're way over on the other side of the playground. Revolutionary at the time. They gave, for, for the weekend of my birthday, my parents got me walkie-talkies, and I loved it. It was like the best gift they could have potentially ever have gotten me. Uh, then... I went to school and was really eager to show my classmates my walkie-talkies. Very excited about this. And I show a boy named Wesley my walkie-talkies. And Wesley does something interesting. Wesley promises that if I give him my walkie-talkies, he's going to actually extend the range of my walkie-talkies. Right? So where they only were, would work within maybe 20 feet... He said he could extend the range to 100 feet, but I had to give him the walkie-talkies. Now, 10-year-old me has never, ever encountered anyone who has lied to him before. It was a uh, something I was not familiar with. So, stupidly, I gave him my brand new walkie-talkies, and he said, yeah, it'll be a couple of days. I will give it back to you when I have the range extended. A couple days go by. Every day in the morning uh, when we're waiting to go to class, I would ask him, Hey, Wesley, do you have my walkie-talkies? I really want those back. And he kept coming up with more creative lies to the point where he actually came up with the lie that he would actually put a television inside of the walkie-talkie. And I'm not even kidding. This is a real thing that really happened to me. He put a he, he promised me he was going to put a television. And of course, when I hear that, I'm thinking like, this is going to be the coolest thing ever. And it holds me over for a few more days. Eventually, I start to realize he's not going to give the walkie talkies back. And I start to annoy him every day asking, um, hey, where's my walkie talkies? And he becomes very quick to anger. In fact, he's the one that has wronged me. He's the one that has stolen from me, and he is the one that is yelling at me for bothering him. Now, why? Well, because every time that I would ask for my walkie-talkies back, every time that I would ask for this thing back, it would remind him of how guilty he felt. At some level, I mean, he's only 10 years old too, at some level, Maybe he's seeing things. Maybe his parents are scum. I don't know. I don't know his, his family situation at all. Maybe he's seeing things that makes him think that stealing is okay. But chances are that's not the case. Chances are it's his first big experience stealing something from someone. And he feels guilty every time I'm reminding him of the fact that he's wronged me. And he feels guilty and he lashes out with anger. Scientists have found this is a common behavioral trait for people who feel guilty. They can be very quick to anger. And also, Wesley, if you're listening to this, I demand my walkie-talkies back. And I want my walkie-talkies back with a television inside. (laughs) So that's a that's another sign you should be keeping an eye out for with your with your ex. The fourth sign that you should be c- keeping an eye out for with your ex if they feel guilty is if they become very moody. Now, another story I'd like to tell you is something that happens to me very recently. Uh, if you don't know, I've been working a little overtime a lot on creating articles and YouTube videos pretty much every single day. And I love what I do, but doing those two things every day takes anywhere from four to five hours from coming up or researching to actually writing the article to actually filming the video to actually coming up with the slides to actually editing the video and posting it all. All of that can take four to five hours. Now, that doesn't really make me feel guilty. That makes me feel good. The problem is I have a lot more to do other than just creating content. I have coaching clients I have to deal with. I have... um, sort of, uh, let's see, Facebook Lives to do on my Facebook group and a bunch of other things that I really can't think of off the top of my head, but it's piling up. I'm supposed to actually create a webinar that I haven't been doing. Anyways, 
I feel guilty when I don't get that stuff done because oftentimes when I'm working on this content for you guys on YouTube and on the website, it tires me out. I'm talking about the same things it feels like every day. I'm trying to find new angles to attack things. I'm trying to make the content as entertaining as possible. I'm trying to find a way to make the content efficient so I don't have to go up there and uh, do kind of a, a video that's that's really, really high end. Uh, it takes time, right? And it, it, it sort of tires me out. And by the time I'm done with all of this, I'm sort of like, ah, I want a break, you know? And uh, I always feel guilty when I don't get some of that other stuff done. That's just as important as this stuff. And uh, as a result, it can make me moody throughout the day. But not only moody, another interesting thing happens to me when I do... Um, feel guilty. Uh, and I kind of like to put sign number four and five together and that is avoidance, right? So as weird as it sounds, I'll get really moody and it sounds very strange that I'll, I'll be moody, but I'll also avoid that work. And it, it kind of creates this weird self-fulfilling prophecy where I don't get all my work done, which causes me to feel guilty, which causes me to grow moody, which causes me to avoid that work, which causes me to feel more guilty, and it just goes around and around and around. It's a weird self-fulfilling cycle that I wasn't really aware of until I actually wrote this article and, and did this video and actually had it mapped out. And I'm like, oh my God, this is ridiculous. But why would I avoid work and why would I grow moody? Well, it's because um, the work, as weird as it sounds, makes me feel bad. Uh, doing this content and everything for you makes me feel good. I feel like I'm accomplishing something. But when I don't get the every all the work done, I feel guilty. And making me feel guilty also makes me feel moody. And I don't like feeling moody. And I don't feel like feeling guilty. So I avoid the things that are making me feel that way. And in some weird way, I kind of misattribute the emotions to the work I'm not getting done. And so I just keep avoiding it. Now, this is actually common behavior that we'll see with exes who feel guilty with you. They'll grow very moody with you. And as a result, they want to avoid things that make them feel bad. That's actually why we don't recommend using a guilt trip on your ex because it can actually make them misattribute those guilt misattribute those guilty emotions onto you and avoid you and we don't want that but it could be a sign that they are feeling guilty